Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we are talking about how generative AI adoption is moving faster than both PC and internet adoption. And moreover, this is a study from an extremely reputable source. You guys might have seen this study floating around. It came out on September 20th. It was called The Rapid Adoption of Generative AI, and it was written by someone from the Harvard Kennedy School, someone from Vanderbilt, and someone from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. In other words, this isn't a Microsoft-supported study or something like that saying AI is growing fast. It's from a group that doesn't have any stake in the results of what they found. Now, one apology in advance for those of you who are watching this. This is going to be a much less visually interesting piece as it's really just me summarizing a study, but we're going to do what we can. And maybe I'll ask the editors to throw in some B-roll here and there. So this study is interested in the economic impact of AI. And the way that they're coming at that was the question, how quickly and intensively AI is being adopted. Importantly, the data from this survey was really recent. It was just captured in August of this year. And some of the headline statistics are really profound. 39.4% of the working age population has used AI and 32% overall said they were now using it at least once a week. Keep in mind, this is a technology that is less than two years old, and a third of adult Americans are using this thing at least once a week. Now, digging into workplace numbers, they were even more revealing. 28% of employed respondents said they had used AI at work, and 24% said they were using it at least weekly. 10% reported daily use. A couple other things that I thought were really interesting about this study. First of all, we definitely have a tissue Kleenex situation where ChatGPT is by far and away the most used service. In fact, it is enough associated with Gen AI that the paper took the release of ChatGPT as day zero. This is where the comparison to the internet and PC came from, with the internet seeing 20% adoption in its first two years, whereas PCs took three years to get to 20%. So given that AI is seeing 39.4% adoption after two years, basically AI is outpacing the internet by a factor of two. Now, one of the interesting things in the study is that part of the reason that AI is being adopted faster is that while rates of adoption at work are fairly similar to PCs and the internet, AI is being adopted outside of work much more quickly than previous technology. This sort of makes sense, right? In 1984, for example, PCs were extremely expensive, but worth it for workplaces due to massive cost savings in document processing and file storage. But in the case of AI, it's obviously very cheap outside of work. People have access to tons and tons of free tools that are really interesting, fun, and useful right now. Basically, whereas PCs were an unaffordable luxury at home well into the early 90s, people can get their feet wet with AI right away. When it comes to AI usage at work, on the one hand, there are some things that are not surprising. Programming and management work leads the way with nearly 50% adoption. But at the same time, 22% of blue-collar workers said they've used AI in their profession, and 16% said they were using it on a weekly basis. In fact, aside from personal services, every single job category had at least 20% adoption, which was classified as having used AI at least once in the past. One concern that the report flagged was workplace inequality based on AI usage. Workers, for example, without a bachelor's degree are half as likely to have used AI at work as their college-educated counterparts. And just broadly, AI usage is more common among younger, more educated, and higher-income workers. Then again, part of what makes the inequality question even more complicated in this circumstance is that it's a lot of these jobs that are most on the chopping block from AI as well. The fact that it is white-collar jobs like programming that seem most in the eye of the hurricane is a fundamentally different phenomenon to past technology waves that we've seen. Now, when it comes to what people are using AI for, writing by far leads the way, probably reflecting ChatGPT's dominance. That's both at work and outside of work. At work, performing administrative tasks is also high on the list, and both inside and outside work, interpreting, translating, and summarize are fairly high. What's interesting is that outside of work, there are a lot of uses which have some meaningful uptake that are different than those happening at work. The number of people using it for tutoring or education is much higher outside work than inside work. People outside of work are using AI for things like entertainment recommendations, health and wellness, recipes and cooking, support with friends and family, and even home improvement. Now, of course, this coming from the St. Louis Fed, the main focus was to try and understand what growing levels of AI adoption might do to the economy and to the labor force. Specifically, they're interested in time-saving and productivity. Researchers showed the data for which tasks were being assisted by AI in the workplace and raw firm, and found that for each of the 10 groups of tasks, over a quarter of the people using AI were applying the technology to that task. Writing, summarizing, obtaining instructions, and searching for information were all use cases for over 45% of people who have integrated AI into their workflow. But in general, what this section really shows is that once workers adopt AI, they use it in as many ways as they possibly can. The survey also found that the more frequently people use AI, the longer they use AI. 
Although only 25% of AI users said they were using it for an hour or more a day at work, 42% of daily users said they were spending more than an hour each day using AI. Applying some extremely back-of-the-napkin math, the report suggests that between 0.5% and 3.5% of all work hours are already AI-assisted. What makes this stat interesting is that it's driven almost entirely by the power users, with 76% of workers reporting zero hours a week using AI. The implication is that when use cases are found, AI use jumps up dramatically to become a ubiquitous part of the workday. Overall, there is a ton of interesting stuff in this study. I very much suggest you go check it out. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Once again, Gen AI being adopted faster than the PC or the internet. And of course, until next time, peace.